We got a great show for you today, breaking down the big names at the tight end position, looking at the truth of how consistent they were for your fantasy team, talking about some news and a whole lot more. Make sure you like, subscribe, enjoy the show. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. The Fantasy Footballers Podcast, Tuesday, February 8th. Jason Moore, Mike Wright, Andy Holloway with you. Oh, the band is back together. We even have both producers. Ayo. What's up, Footland? <laughs> Try to distinguish them out there, listenership. That was uh, the judge and the owl. And they're here. Wait, we have a full group. We do. I remember how to do this. Yeah, it was great. Today at lunch, this was the first time since we have moved the Borgogan to Arizona uh, that we had all of us together, which is crazy because that happened a long time ago. It has been a wild few months. Uh, but we're back. We're back, and we've got the truth of the tight end position on today's show, which we'll get into uh, a number of these ever important and hard to secure elite tight ends and talk about some of the players that were performing injuries, derailed seasons that, um, you know, I think there's a lot of question marks around which tight ends would be considered buys in dynasty leagues and keeper leagues. Yeah, certainly. Uh, because we all know that like when you have one locked in, huge advantage on a week-to-week -week basis. I have tried everything in my power to, in the league where we are, Champ Champ Mike, to yes. acquire Kyle Pitts, including Kelsey and a first and second. That was turned down. Um, and then in our other dynasty league, I went to, I was like, I got to have Kyle Pitts in some sure. dynasty league. But oh, have, in hours. I, yeah, then I, but I have Mark Andrews, who I, I, oh. I'm not going to go also, searching after I Pitts. believe the owl has Kyle Pitts. He, he does. He does. Yes. Now, see, one might make the argument that this would be an opportune time to trade Mark Andrews. One could make that argument. I am very happy to have Mark Andrews. Yeah, mm -hmm. I would be very happy to no, have I did. Mark Andrews, Look, you can, you can be happy to have a player and still be willing to move them. I love having that positional advantage in a dynasty league. It's been great with Kelsey for the last forever. You saw um, Kyle Pitts got into the end zone, something he, in the Pro Bowl. Yeah. I mean, we didn't oh, think man. it could be done. Did but. you guys watch any of the Pro Bowl? I saw some highlight clips that made me want to throw up a little. Yeah, they – Really, we're not giving it their all, uh, at least at the beginning of the game. I believe they, it was J.J. Watt that tweeted out he's seen walkthroughs yes. with more intensity. But it was it was a little bit of a sad day in the Wright household. My son, who loves football, uh, loves Madden, loves superstars, has been very excited for the Pro Bowl. And I have been doing my best. Not to stifle that? No, I've been trying to... Adjust expectations. Trying to stifle that for for what the Pro Bowl is, which is, I don't I don't know why we still do this uh, because I don't blame the players. If I'm out there, there ain't no way I am risking an, anything of of uh, that could cause an injury to myself or to to my family to the the NFL family. Like it's just it's not going to happen for this meaningless game. So we turn it on and they're ba they're playing two hand touch like. The refs are actually just – they're calling people down. Uh, inter there's interceptions galore because wide receivers are running at 30% speed. It's the dumbest thing it's, in the world. It's a silly thing. I like the skill drills. I like that – like they got dodgeball going. They're doing races. Like that's some more interesting stuff, which I didn't even I, – I didn't know when it was happening. I wish – we need to get the marketing out there better. I don't care about the Pro Bowl. Market the other stuff. But anyway, so my son is watching, and he's just <laughs> getting more and more upset to the point where eventually we're like five minutes in, and he's like, Dad, you were right. I should never have looked forward to the Pro oh. Bowl. And I'm like, the NFL, this is what we're doing. There's got to be better ways to honor the true you know, superstars that, that have the Pro Bowl season without the – 
without the game, and I know this is a conversation you don't that, need is, the game. that has been going on for a very long time, but yeah. it was it was sad to watch my my son and his dreams of watching the players, watching like an ultimate Madden contest, and it's, it's not a real football game. Somebody's going to have a non-contact injury in the Pro Bowl, and it will be over. That's well, what will happen. I think that, like, oh, I don't remember off the top of my head, but they were they did like a beach flag football. And, that seems like a problem. And somebody tore yeah. an ACL during it. No, that, that makes sense. I mean, you can get hurt doing anything. Yes. So uh, it, it's weird. I've, I don't watch it. I did see that Kyler Murray, who we'll talk about in the news, oh, good. Um, had thrown three touchdowns in the Pro Bowl. That's why Which, I saw the three clips. But his, his first pass was on, should have been a pick six. Oh, yeah. And then he threw a pick six shortly thereafter that. So four touchdowns. Good job, yeah, Kyler. No, he's, it was a weird, yeah. weird thing. We have some news to talk about. Not all good. Yeah. And then we have the truth to get into at the tight end position. A reminder for those of you joining us here in the prolonged preseason for 2022, mm -hmm. the offseason, uh, on Super Bowl Sunday, which is coming up uh, this weekend, the ultimate draft kit for 2022, along with the Dynasty Pass. The presale begins on Sunday. We will be doing a live stream. Uh, at some point this weekend and uh, be connecting with you guys to celebrate the pre-sale of the UDK. And here is the the big exciting... Well, first of all, you get something immediately, right? Even though the UDK and all of the the app and all the features, they, they come out on June 1st, if you get the UDK Plus right now, you get into the Dynasty Pass, which That's means you right. get uh, access to a ton. I mean, I've seen people talking Dynasty more right now than I can ever remember for February. Do you guys agree with that? Yeah, it's it's everywhere because it's a great, fun format to play that is currently like this is what you do this time of the year. Uh, you play Dynasty, uh, and so, yeah, if, if you're not in a Dynasty League, you can get started in one of FootClanLeagues.com. We're doing right now a uh, our first rookie draft right now with some industry a experts, a mock yep. that will be in that UDK Plus as well. But if you pre-order before March 10th, so from uh, this Sunday on through March 10th, You'll be entered to win a listener league spot. Oh, baby. Oh, if you're like, I don't have enough talent to <laughs> enter the listener league, here's your chance. You can get in. You can win a spot. We're giving that away. Uh, you'll get the lowest price on the ultimate draft kit. You'll get some gift cards. Uh, you'll get a digital copy of our book. And uh, like I said, early access to all the off-season content. So you want the best value, make sure you uh, head to ultimatedraftkit.com. This Sunday, right before Joe Burrow Ooh. loses his first Super Bowl. Oh, boo, boo. Did we do Super Bowl? We have not picks? yet done it. Do no. we save that? Well, we or, did, I mean, but other teams who are right. Since no, I mean, like, vanquished. <laughs> like, do you have do you have it in your head right now? Who you think is going to win the game? I do. I I think that it will be. Uh, unfortunately. I think it'll be the Los Angeles Rams. I'm rooting for the Bengals. I'm rooting for Joe Burrow. Um, I just think that the Rams are the better f team, and I really do think that the fact that um, you know a couple of years ago a lot of the core of this Rams team was there, lessons learned, the experience. I think that will matter, as, you know, as the game goes on. I took I took uh, very early on the Rams minus four. And then I took the under, which I think when I got it, it was 49 and a half. Because hmm. I think defense is going to rule this game. I think Aaron Donald is going to be too much. But, Mike, do you do you think yeah, Cincinnati I, can overcome? I I don't. Okay. Uh, I mean, it, it's not like it will be a shocking thing because they've made it. But, like, that game against the Titans, it mean, it, you know, just a couple weeks ago, that thing came down to the to the to just the very end. I think Tannehill had like three interceptions, and they still barely won. I know they dominated the Chiefs in the second half of of, of the championship week. There's the Bengals are a very strange team. Well, when you have a Cinderella story, every week feels like it's going to be pumpkin time. Yeah, you know, and yeah, so, yeah, that's that's fair. That's uh, fair. Last I, certainly last week, everybody thought that you know it wasn't yeah. going to be. There's no chance, right? I mean, what were they seven and a half point underdogs against Kansas City? Yeah. yeah, and then at halftime, it was even like more done. Deal. Yeah, <laughs> so I, I'm always rooting in situations like this where I'm not I'm not vested in either team. I just love to see a great game. I'd mm -hmm. love to see it come down to the end, and 
Um, I don't know if I can handle Odell Beckham Jr., the Super Bowl champion. <laughs> that may be tough, uh, but sooner than later, we're going to yeah. see. All right, let's talk news. News and notes from around the league. Where do you want to start? Well, we can start with what happened after the Pro Bowl, Day. which was that this Alvin... This is why you don't have a Pro Bowl. <laughs> Alvin Kamara was taken into custody uh, by the Le Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department on Sunday. According to Adam Schefter, uh, it was uh, a battery charge. He was held overnight on a $5,000 uh, bond, and you know that's basically it. He he allegedly punched you're, someone. You're just yeah. charging battery. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it was just weird. like his battery. Anyway, go on. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, he, not battery is not. He charged the battery eight times, allegedly. So, um, yeah, as far as what this happened, we don't know anything really. Yeah, we don't know much of anything. Obviously, a suspension could come. Um, you know, later. Uh, but usually the legal process will play itself out, and I don't know if uh, you know. I don't know. It's unfortunate go with away. already bad vibes for Saints heading yeah. into the off season. Um, with yeah, all right, we'll move on. Yep. Juju Smith Schuster likely headed to free agency. Okay, I would be headed there too, Juju. Yes. Uh, Kyler Murray unfollowed the Cardinals on Instagram uh, and Twitter. Here we go. Mike, I, Mike, you, here we go. You reacted the strongest to this and I'll just lay it out there. Kyler Murray going into, uh, I think uh, this is year four, right? Yeah. And so first time he's eligible for an extension and you know, this is the, the new way to get a hold of the team, I guess is unfollow them and delete your affiliations on your Instagram. It is so childish and gross. Like, this is diva wide receiver stuff that you're like, oh, they've removed. They did it. They scrubbed their socials for all of their team stuff. This is middle school you're dating. Not, you weren't yes. happy. No. Be like, it's been as, as great as, as it looks like Kyler could become. Like, the, the skill set is there. It, for him to be a, a top five quarterback – in the league. Like every once in a while you see some of these passes where he's just so pinpoint accurate down the field. He's faster than a lot of the guys on the field. And then you just but you see a lot of boneheaded stuff also on the field that is not Cliff Kingsbury's fault. A lot of I love blaming Cliff for stuff whenever I possibly can, but you see a lot of things on the field where you're like, Kyler, you have to know better that you can't possibly do that. So it was already just kind of upgrading to the the way that the Cardinals season ended, and now you have this. Like, if this is truly over an extension, you're just now eligible for it. Like, hold on, man, hold. Be the face of the franchise like you currently are. What are you doing, scrubbing your social media? I mean, we don't know what it's for. Maybe tomorrow, but that's, it the, comes out with the new uniform reveal, and everything is is <laughs> fine. And this was all just part of it. Like that, that's still in the realm okay. of possibility. But if you did just scrub it because he's mad at them, it feels like the most. You use the word childish is exactly yeah. what I thought. It's like, dude, grow up. I'm yeah. gonna take you out of social media. <laughs> it's like maybe this is just how the next generation negotiates. Maybe. I mean, the, uh, by the next generation, you mean the children. <laughs> well, I mean, I guess in some ways, but like this, is, he's not alone in this. No, I, I know. And Patrick Peterson did it too. <laughs> Maybe it's a cardinal uh, thing. Uh, okay, so we don't know what's going on. There's always speculation with Kyler about the uh, baseball career. And, uh, you know, I think you have a window, right? Like the... The attractive thing about the Bengals right now, year two for Joe Burrow, they're in the Super Bowl. You are going to have your core locked up at the lowest possible price for an extended period of time. That's your that's the Russell Wilson window when they won and right. got there twice. Uh, Patrick Mahomes. The Bengals have so much cap space. Yeah, and, and so that's kind of – that's your chance to do it. And the Cardinals went pretty heavy in the all-in scheme of things last year. Bringing in some older veteran, you right. know, JJ Watt and AJ Green, but Zach Ertz. yeah, Zach Ertz midseason trade. So it'll be interesting. It's unfortunate when you do see somebody that you know you're talking about dynasty and things like that. You'd love to know where a player is going to be. I believe only he and Cam Newton 
are quarterbacks that have thrown for 10,000 yards and 1,500 rushing yards through three seasons in the history of the NFL. Yes. Uh, did you guys talk? Uh, I, I may or may not have watched all of the shows I missed. I don't believe um, Did you talk Washington Commanders? Yes. Yeah. What um, were, you, what were, the, what were we some did. of the public comments on the new name? Um, I think publicly, they, you know, the, the public is pretty disappointed, which, of course, it would be impossible to not be disappointed after a two-year hiatus. Personally, I think it's pretty meh. Yeah, well, that, Very disappointing. Now, there was the... Um, What's their nickname? The commanders. <laughs> no, I know, I know. But, you you know, the cards. The Pats. The, the, what, the Niners. What, what do you call them? The commanders. The manders. The manders. <laughs> um, they needed, and some people would say they needed benign. They needed to be boring. They needed a boring mm. name. Mike, did you hate it too? It was, it, when you wait that long for a name, it doesn't matter. I thought but, Red Wolves was the best. Yeah. Because you can howl. You need the connect. You need something sure. you can do in the stands. Oh, man. The the, the Red they Hogs, they could all snort. Yeah. That'd be fun. You all know right. what's funny, though, is there are a lot of teams that are currently Manders. Named if they were to, <laughs> If they were to come out now. Yeah, I mean, like the Cardinals, the, the Manders, or the Packers, like the like we accept them now because we're used to them. I'm well, hey, to, somebody brought up the Utah Jazz. I mean, somebody brought up that that's a team name, and we it's we're fine with it now. But well, come on, because the Jazz, is, yeah, I mean, weren't they? I, they I were mean, Louisiana, yeah. Yeah, where it made sense. <laughs> right. I mean, now I love it when they move because that's fun. like there aren't yeah. there aren't Cardinals in Arizona. Oh, wait, there are like a few. four of them and lakes and they don't want to be here. They're trying to get like, out. <laughs> yeah. Is, yeah. Naming a team. Names are weird. Names are just a strange <laughs> okay, thing. All right. Here's some coaching hires. We will have a, uh, a breakdown episode for the implications of all the new head coaches in time. But right now, quick hit opinions. Doug Peterson was hired as the head coach of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Former Eagles head coach, brought Nick Foles to a Super Bowl, was instrumental in moving Carson Wentz from being a rookie to an MVP candidate. Uh, a lot of people in Philly, I learned this week when this was being discussed, don't blame Doug Peterson. Feel like it's really was never his fault. So did you guys like this hire? Do you like it for Trevor Lawrence? Do you like it for some optimism? Originally, I didn't like the hire because I know one of the criticisms for Doug Peterson was that he didn't, um, he didn't develop the younger people behind the team that he inherited but the truth is the Jaguars are going to go as Trevor Lawrence goes that's it if Trevor Lawrence is great the Jaguars will be fine if Trevor Lawrence is a bum the Jaguars will suck it doesn't matter uh who the head coach is other than the development of Trevor Lawrence and you know you know when when Carson Wentz was a rookie Doug Peterson was the coach and he took him from a rookie to an MVP candidate, like you said. So I, I think it is a well, fine hire. Did he do it or did Reich do it? I mean, the team, right? Like, uh, I'm sure it wasn't just any one person. It could have been other players on the roster. It could have been, you know, it's it, it, right. It, it takes a village, Mike. But <laughs> yes, uh, Doug Peterson says, was say, Doug to Peterson, raise a franchise to, quarterback. That's yeah. what they say. Um, but Doug Peterson was the main man. I I have done some thinking about the whole like we're just so. Hyper focused on this coach is good, this coach is bad, and then you look at a situation like Cincinnati and Zach Taylor. Mm -hmm. Who okay, you can like him, you can not like him. Look, Zach Taylor or any other person was never going to make Andy Dalton slash five backups stars, and they had two years there of failure, right? Yeah. And guess what? You get a quarterback, you're the best coach. Quarterbacks make yeah, it really the helps. Coach. It's just even even early career stuff with some of the greats, the great coaches of all time, um, helps to have Tom Brady, Kevin O'Connell, head coach of the Minnesota Vikings. Coming, he's the OC for the Rams. Coming over, bringing that uh, perfume of McVay. Yes. It's yes. it still smells very sweet to teams out there. Well, well of course it does. You got the Super Bowl. The, yeah, to both coaches. Well, in the no, Super I'm not Bowl saying are... McVay. Like McVay's great, but I'm but I'm saying the trying to get the 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 coaches who will be the next McVay because they have been within six feet of McVay. Or or you aim for youth, which uh, the Dolphins hired Mike McDaniel, 38 years old, as their next head coach. Kind of a surprise. Former 49ers offensive coordinator. Uh, which he's been, means he's been with Shanahan a long time, 
So it, he should bring that offense over there. I know it, if I had Jalen Waddle on my dino squad, I'm super pumped right mm -hmm. now. I think I'd be encouraged in general for all offensive pieces there that you'll get a you'll get another shot at developing and uh, building that offense with with Tua. Kellen Moore is expected to return to the Cowboys as offensive coordinator. I would have bet on him getting a job before Mike McDaniel just based on the buzz, but he's going to go back, and that's good for some offensive stability sure. for Dak. Lovey Smith, the new head coach of the Texans. Yep, going defense. And so, so weird to me. Yeah, and he was their defensive coordinator, did a great job with really limited personnel, but kind of came came in late to the coaching uh, carousel of interviews here where Brian Flores, uh, you also had Josh McCown. McCown. So then all of a sudden, Lovey Smith's your head coach again where he hasn't been a head coach in a while. Yeah, he's a, he's a good coach. It just is surprising to me that they let their one-year head coach go who was – part of this team and then maybe there was other stuff behind the scenes it just seems weird to me um that they would that they would let him go but lovey smith is a good head coach hopefully he works out well for the texans and the bears hired head coach matt eberflus i think that's his name yeah <laughs> uh over a week ago we hadn't talked about it on the show yet but that's another hire new head coaching changes all over the place and uh, beginning of March, we'll have a coaching changes episode with all the fallout and all the rest of the the coordinator hires and things of that nature. Anything other news wise there, Brooksy? No, sir. Al, any news that you've been ready to break? No, sir. Mm, okay. Right. Bad job. Yeah. Get some news. Yeah, I want you to dig a little deeper. <laughs> all right, let's get into the truth. You want answers? I think I'm entitled. You want answers? I want the truth! You can't handle the truth! It's our final truth episode, is it not? It sure is, because it's the tight ends, and we saved the best for last. So, for a tight end, we're defining a great game as more than 15 fantasy points, good games, more than 10, and bust games fewer than 7. And we don't hold the old miss games against them. So we're just looking at uh, when we talk about consistency for a player. Uh, love breaking these down. Mark Andrews came in at number one. Oh, man. With a consistency rank of number two. He was less consistent in the first half of the year, but the most consistent tight end in the second half. 154 targets, 107 receptions, 1,361 yards, and nine touchdowns, which – I don't remember the exact number, but I think he's in the top five or six in total receiving yards of any player. So, I mean, 1,361 receiving yards, nine touchdowns, 35% great game, 65% good, rarely busted, third most tight end targets ever in a season. Essentially, whatever happened on offense in Baltimore on any given week, different quarterback, different injury, different situation, different running back, who, by the way, uh, I looked up the – Running back after contact metrics, surprise, surprise, Baltimore was dead last in the entire league. What? Uh, no. But the stalwart. Freeman? Yeah. The <laughs> Lat Latavius? <laughs> Tyson? <laughs> Left um, Bell. Yeah, that, that's the better one. Tyson really didn't get a share. But Mark Andrews was the consistency for that offense at every turn. And the recipe of just throwing him the ball no matter what always seemed to work. Do you yeah. worry at all about how much, you know, came when it wasn't uh, Lamar Jackson there? Do you think that next year uh, his target share or any of those numbers comes down significantly into the offense and he becomes less of the dominant one of the offense? Yes, 100%. You do. That's why I said what I did at the beginning of the show, <laughs> where it might be the time to trade Mark Andrews in a dynasty league if you could go get a Kyle Pitts and stuff. Because this is the peak opportunity for him. This was no one left. I mean, Hollywood Brown dealt with injuries again. You had Rashad Bateman on and off the field. You had no running game. You had no Lamar Jackson for a large portion of the season. So will Mark Andrews be great for a long time? Yeah, he will. But he might not be this great. At least I don't believe so. I think that he has. I, I, like, 
he was so dominant on the field and this it wasn't getting lucky of you know he's hey he got six he's normal six targets and he he came down with a touchdown this time no it was the touchdown upside combined with a high reception high total yardage i can understand like i understand the argument of well lamar missed a lot of games over the second half of the season I would take that argument to try and go trade for Mark Andrews. Like he is somebody that I want on my dynasty squad. I think he's easily a, a, a top three uh, dynasty tight end at the moment. And this was a but, very, very big yes jump. It was. You're talking about a target jump from 88 to 154, nearly double the total receptions, 58 to 107. Um. I just don't think I agree with that because I know that like Lamar has had, he's definitely had more of a direct rapport with Hollywood Brown in the past. I just don't, I felt like it was no one left situation. The, yeah. I mean, I, I, I understand that this could be one of those situations, but here's what we also know about Mark Andrews. Um, he's been great since he's been in the league. Yeah. He's been a top five, uh, tight end every year other than his rookie year, which no rookies are good. Um, and now in, you know, uh, he's only 26 years old. He dominated the NFL. He is one of those bigger, stronger, faster than you tight ends that is, um, you know, a, a presence out there that you just can't cover. And while he did a lot more without Lamar Jackson than he did with Lamar Jackson uh, during the course of this year, I, I also think that he proved that he can be the centerpiece um, of this offense in a way that I think going into next year, they can build this offense around him. But to illustrate it, because we're talking about what is the truth, mm -hmm. and to illustrate Andy's uh, point, there were four games without uh, Lamar Jackson this year and 12 with him. He averaged 13.36 fantasy points per game, half PPR, with Lamar, and 19.2 without Lamar. So he definitely did... Uh, a lot more per game without Lamar. Yeah, I would just be willing to bet everything in the world that the target share comes down, and that the offense can function outside of him next year. You know, J.K. Dobbins returning and Gus Edwards and another year of Rashad Bateman. He'll be a very interesting name in sure. the offseason. So again, it when when you point that out, it's more what can you capitalize on, like. Can you get more for any other tight end in a dynasty league right now than Mark Andrews? No, I think I think he's the number one tight end in dynasty. Really? I think See, so I don't, too. I look at him as he's still ew, more discounted than the other guys. Who would you draft if you were drafting, uh, you know, a, a tight end um, in a dynasty startup? Right. I feel like Mark Andrews might be the first tight end. It would be between him and Pitts it because is. of youth, but obviously. Whatever you want to say about, oh, maybe he's worse with Lamar Jackson. Lamar Jackson throws touchdowns. He's been great with Lamar Jackson. You can't com compare that to Kyle Pitts, and it's like, okay, you've got a, maybe one year left of Matt Ryan, and then you hope that he someday finds a quarterback that can throw enough touchdowns his way. So, Mike, is your point more that he may be entering a multi-year Kelsey peak? Yes. Uh, and I would I would be better. I, like, all the arguments of what, why this year was so much bigger than the other ones? Those totally make sense, but I just I saw a player who that was his like he took the jump uh, in the NFL. He's just he's always open, incredible hands. He's just he's such a good player, and his situation is it's very stable. Where he's young, has the new contract. Okay, Lamar Jackson is the guy. Meanwhile, like George Kittle, George Kittle has is going to have a brand new quarterback throwing him the ball. Travis Kelsey is on the the way out Kyle Pitts is it's not all hope and promise for him because you saw a lot of really really good things of, that Pitts is going to hit but there still is a margin for Kyle Pitts that is well you hope he gives you a season like Mark Andrews just did yeah no question I mean you, you're you going to have quarterback yes you could have a new quarterback in a year in you Atlanta will. yeah <laughs> Travis Kelsey came in at number two he was number one in consistency uh, he was more consistent over the course of the year than than Andrews was. Number one in the first half, number two in the second half. You know, his, his margin for error, his margin for not being the great Zeus. You know, ninety two for eleven, twenty five and nine felt felt like a 
bad year. Oh, super disappointing. Uh, only 1,100 yards, nine touchdowns, not even double-digit touchdowns. What a loser. And he was real close total points-wise with Andrews, was he not? He was pretty close, but he missed a game. Um, so I, I believe he is – it wasn't it wasn't a hair. And he, and even on a per-game basis, I believe Andrews outscored Kelsey. Andrews was 14.6 and Kelsey was 13.5 per uh, game. Kelsey still had a higher percentage of great games and good games, slightly. Uh, more busts. Played much better against bottom 16 defenses. Uh, whereas Andrews performed better against top defenses, interestingly enough. And uh, it was great on the road. Andrews was better at home. Led all tight ends and third down receptions. I mean, we know what Kelsey is. Mm -hmm. The question about Kelsey, unfortunately, comes down to Age. what he will be. Age is the only question to me. That's it. He is unfathomably talented. He's been the best tight end in the league over the last decade. He's tied to the best passing quarterback in the league. I mean, there, there's, there, there is only one question, and it's when does it stop? Mm -hmm. That's it. Um, going into next year, you know, I, I feel like he very well should be drafted ahead of Mark Andrews. You know, we haven't seen it drop off yet um, in a redraft, in a redraft. league, obviously in a dynasty league. Um, this is where I think you should start looking to move on because he is, he's older. I mean, you're, you're 32 years old. This is where, you know, when I went looking at comps of other great hall of fame level, dominant tight ends who played a long time, like Tony Gonzalez, 32 years old was kind of their well peak. Think about a player that Mike, who's, who's a player Mike has traditionally despised on the show at tight end position. Who's who, who said he was old busted. Who was old, old oh, busted Jim, tight Jimmy, end? Jimmy for, Graham? No. <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of them. Yeah. Well, you you have spent, we have all spent time oh, Zach Ertz? speculating on Zach Ertz's demise, right? Ah, he's old busted. That was a, a phrase associated with it. Uh, no, it was uh, washed. Okay, washed. Well, Zach Ertz is younger than Travis Kelsey, is my point. Yeah, because he's, he's, he's a washed. Year he's so clean. He's younger than Travis <laughs> Kelsey. So I'm illustrating that that is the time period in which it is fair to question. Now, Kelsey is as much of a unicorn at the tight end position as mm -hmm. Derrick Henry is at the running back position. <laughs> but go, sorry, I got I got I got to interject here. I'm um, looking at this great website, the fantasy footballers. dot com. Uh, dot com. <laughs> and um, I just pulled Keyword. up Tra Travis Kelsey's uh, profile page, and I have never seen Travis Kelsey look like what he looks like on our profile I, page. I posted it in the Slack, too. Is that what... Or did no, you find I it independently? I found it totally independently. So we both found it, both had a chuckle, and had to share it. It's, this it's, is the mustache version of it, Travis Kelsey? Travis Kelsey, short hair, mustache. and But like a mustache that resembles... It's split in the middle. It is it is split in the middle. It looks like a very finely manicured pair of eyebrows. <laughs> it does. <laughs> I mean, this is Eugene Levy's eyebrows on this man's lip. That's this, true. This picture is unbelievable. Go to the fantasyfootballers dot com. Look search at the, Travis Kelsey. And does enjoy update. yourself. It does not look like him at all. I and was he, like, wait, is this and the he's right also person? very confused in the yeah. picture. Does this picture hurt or help his dynasty stuff? It definitely hurts. I mean, you can't look at this and be like, that's the guy I want. He had a couple of those unforeseen games this year where he was absolutely a bust which were maybe small glimpses. I mean, we know you guys talked about it when you talked about Tyreek Hill and um, the, the wide receiver, the truth of, of that position and, you know, the average yards downfield. Like some things changed in the Kansas City offense by necessity. They had to adjust. It almost got them back to the Super Bowl. But whatever happened, whatever adjustments were being made, left a bigger window for – a bad game from Travis Kelsey this year than had been in the past. Mm -hmm. Yeah, one hundred percent. He he definitely had um, a couple of bad busts, but he also, I mean, in week fifteen, if you were in the playoffs, yeah, you, you played in week sixteen. Yeah, is he still worth a second round in redraft? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, uh, there is a huge point gap between the top two, yes. Mark Andrews and Travis Kelsey, and the next tight end on the list. Um. Which last year there was a huge gap between Kelsey the second and, and the, the third. <laughs> yeah, um, Dalton Schultz. What the doctor? <laughs> the doctor. How? What? How did he get here? Sixth and consistent. He did it the Jason Witten way. Consistency. Sixth and consistency this year ended up twenty four percent great, forty seven percent good, twenty nine percent bust. 
He also got here by sneaking in a number three overall finish in week 18 when no one cared. Ah, uh, that's how he did it. And, um, you know, he had a, he had a rough patch <laughs> right in the middle of the year. I mean, if you had, you had no tight end really of value. If you were planning on using Dalton Schultz from week seven, his bye week through really week 11. Yeah, it was a, a it was a, it was rough because it hit right when you finally bought in. Yes. Like when Dalton Schultz, the the number one overall in week three, like, oh, that's fun. Then he hits you with number six, and it's – this is a possibility. fun, too. Th this is a possibility that Dalton Schultz could be locked in. And <laughs> then just a couple weeks later, he was destroying your soul for a month and a half. One finish inside the top 15 – between weeks 7 through 14. Man, tight ends suck. <laughs> um, I mean, the reality is the other great tight ends. There were other great tight ends this year, but they didn't play enough. This was points per game great. Exactly. They were points per game great. They were far better than the doctor here. But the doctor... Um, he accumulated. Yeah, he accumulated. I mean, look, the, you say whatever you want, but <laughs> when you are a doctor, health is important. And he yeah, played all 16. Uh, that uh, You know... <laughs> 17. Oh, thank you. 17. Um, I will say that the, the stretch in the middle where it was, it didn't go very well. Um, Michael Gallup came back from his injury week 10. So five of the seven poor weeks were when Gallup came and that back. Was, that was a concern. Now Gallup is a free agent, also tore his uh, ACL. So we'll have to wait to see. I think that the reality is what Dalton Schultz is next year is one of those well, assuming that too. he yes assuming that he re-signs with the Cowboys is that he is a I, I don't think anyone's hopping the fence to get Dalton Schultz he'll still be a late round guy to me <laughs> is that a phrase <laughs> I'm picturing I want to picture this one yeah I mean I it's mean, like they hop in the fence because they got to get in there yeah you gotta, is this is this a hop of fence like you're there's a concert or something and and I'm I don't want to buy a ticket, so yeah. I'm hopping the fence, or they're sold out. Exactly. Maybe there's okay. a little fence. You know, the how how high is this? A uh, is this like the metal gate fence? Is this a? It's a metal a fence, fence, but it's a, it's five footer. I mean, so the, okay. you gotta you gotta jump. Um, I you're can't. not just scissor walking over this fence. <laughs> yeah, I I remember one time backing down my street and watching you jump a fence because yes. I was picking you up to go to the Suns game. Tell me you weren't impressed. I t I videoed because I didn't expect it to go as well <laughs> you, as it did. You videoed and you were disappointed. I was disappointed. Because you, you thought I was going to eat not, it. You did not fall. Um, yeah, he's a free agent. You still have Jarwin under contract. Jarwin doesn't really concern me because it, it's kind of a binary thing here. If you bring Dalton Schultz back, you're doing it because he's your guy because he proved he can be the guy. Mm -hmm. And then if he's gone, it's because he's taking money somewhere else. And you know, and that, then we can talk about Jarwin again. But I think that... Dalton Schultz is probably coming back. What? <laughs> See, I, I, I think he'll be back. I think he will leave because what he did will get him paid more than it should. I think he might get franchised. They call that up. Yeah, I guess. I guess if they don't have anywhere else to put it, but I, I could see him going the route of Austin Hooper. Okay. A, a no, that really, makes, that a, makes a really good sense. year where he just kind of was solid, and then someone goes and spends way too much for him. Um. Okay. Let me let me give you some. Let me give you two destinations for Dalton Schultz just to kind of tease out your reaction okay it's right. gonna be bad go in, on indianapolis nah meh because they, they they'd be a rumor their quarterback they'd be a rumored destination it'd be them. it'll still be wins i mean it, it's if they pay up for him it's interesting because you have Pittman and who else for Sound, pass catchers it sounds a lot like austin hooper they had some yeah. other tight ends there but they paid up for him, and it was like a, an average, above average quarterback well, we have, with Baker. And right, but I, we've also now found out the truth of Baker. Just if he <laughs> destroys fantasy football, um, Tennessee. Tennessee's another okay, top okay. Desti top destination for a tight end. That one is better to me. <sighs> yeah, I mean, you Julio, AJ Brown. Just it's your ceiling. Yeah, I mean they they missed uh, a Johnu Smith this year. I sure. feel like they they could so utilize did the Patriots. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you Ferk Daddy didn't get it done. Ferk no, daddy the Ferk the Ferk Daddy is a placeholder Daddy. <laughs> yeah. Um. All right, we'll move on. We don't have to talk about him anymore. George Kittle, consistency ranking number four, missed time again with injury. First half of the season was a number nine inconsistency. Second half was fourth. 
look, I, I, this is a big discussion topic here. Sure. He was 71 for 9, 10, and 6. Uh, 25% target share. Cool. That's great. Second among tight ends. But, you know, busted 43% of the time. This was not elite level tight end play. No, it was very disappointing. And so now you have new quarterback. Trey Lance is going to be the guy. George Kittle has shown a, 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 would you call him injury prone? I uh, behind his back. Behind his back. <laughs> but I would I would it was if it's behind his back, I would still cover my mouth right. and whisper it. Okay. Yeah. And deny it. Right. Oh, like yes. later. Yes. Really that pronounced like never. that? Though? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Um, yeah, yeah. It, yeah. The the where I'm intentionally making it look like I'm telling injury a secret. Prone. Yeah, I mean, the, he he does play through injuries. He's a tough guy out there. Um, I think he's had a little bit of, uh, you know, it, all all jokes aside, I don't think I would personally view him as injury prone. I realize one full season. Yes, the last three years it's been 14 games, eight games, 14 games. Um, but I I do think that he is right up there with the other two big names, Mark Andrews, Travis Kelsey, and George Kittle will be there. Darren Waller. He'll be he'll be above Darren Waller to me. Um I, I would put Kittle in that third spot for redraft next year. And you might end up with a pretty good discount because of the quarterback change, the injuries over the last couple of years. And he certainly had, you know, some dominant Maybe. dominant. Let me give you games. one more trend. I think the discount's gonna be like shopping at Kohl's. Oh, it's fake. They just yeah. mark it up and then yeah. say it's discounted. Uh huh. So this is this is too many years to not make this a correlation. Or uh, Kyle Shanahan runs his offense a certain way, and that way means that George Kittle he just doesn't score a lot of touchdowns. I mean, he just doesn't. You're talking about a stretch of five, two, five, five, two, six, and so career high this year. Yeah, there was a career high. Six Oof. touchdowns. So, uh, to me, that is something that has happened for so long. And because you have consistency at the the head coach position, look, at, around the goal line, they hand the ball off. They they dump it to Debo. They do inventive stuff. They do stuff like uh, like Andy Reid does sometimes, you know, where you've got inventive play calling. And for some reason, it's not just go to George Kittle. Well, it's, you've got to establish it. Well, yeah. Yeah. And it, it's so I, the question is, is kind of like, have we – let me ask you this. Have we seen the best season of his career already – and, and what is he Ooh, in a dynasty that's league? Good question. I don't believe we have seen the best season of George Kittle's career. He had six touchdowns this year, but they all came in a stretch of six games where he actually looked like a touchdown dominant machine for that small stretch. Um, Debo stayed healthy this year, which was great. Um, obviously, those you know his touchdowns uh, take away a little bit from George Kittle. George Kittle is 28 years old, so he's still got – you know, three solid years left of tight end premium age production. Um, so I, you're not you're not shopping him in a dynasty league because I think that there there might be the might be the time. I would be kicking the tires for George Kittle personally. Okay, Mike, where are you on that? I tried to get George Kittle this year because I have before or after <laughs> it was before. Okay, it was before and like and any mid regrets? Point. Would you have been mad if you had gotten him after the, what no, happened this year? I was just I was going all in on the Trey Lance stack. Mm, how'd, that, how'd that work out? <laughs> Those two games I got to play him were pretty sweet. <laughs> oh my gosh! All right, well, Gronk came in at fifth, uh, at number five. He was great, but there's not a lot to say because I. It's done. The it's truth is, it's, it's over. It's probably done. I mean, he likes money. Even if he comes back, I'm not. Yes. Okay. If he comes, if if Gronk plays next year without Tom Brady, I'm not drafting him. I won't, I won't draft him at any point. There's other tight ends that I'll take a shot on. Of I agree. They're going to take a step forward. I I don't need Kyle Trask's um, touchdowns. No, there's, this is much more like Romo Witten, where like Witten really wasn't physically what he could have should have been to make production happen on the field, but the relationship was so tight that it just worked. Mm -hmm. Um. But a great year, fifty percent great games. I mean, he if he had played the whole season, he might have been the number one tight end. Yes. Or or, or really close, just because he would have probably scored twelve times and um still went fifty five for eight oh two. Oh, I thought you had I, I, thought, I pulled back. I saw you. I didn't want it. I got it. 55! We're out of practice. I mean it's we off are. season. <laughs> uh number six was Zach Ertz of the Arizona Cardinals. We talked about, you know, he's a year younger than Travis Kelsey. There's also – he's a free agent. He was number 10 in consistency. Uh, 
You know, he was necessary to Arizona in a yeah. bigger way towards the end of the year because of the absence of DeAndre Hopkins. So there is maybe an argument that consistency will go down if he's brought back. Um, yeah. Only 6% great. So he didn't give you weak winning weeks. He was just kind of, to me, he was Dalton Schultz light. Yeah, that that's fair. He was he was better than I think most people expected coming into this year. Obviously, the trade helped. Going to Kyler Murray, having him be more of a centerpiece of the offense. I don't know if you realize he was number two in targets at the tight end position. Yikes! Like what? He, yeah, he was he was heavily um, one hundred and twelve. Wow, uh, that shows how many targets Mark Andrews got. Yeah, and it also shows how many targets you need for for Zach Ertz to do something. To do something. Um, I think if he goes back, if he's re-signed by the Cardinals, he's currently a free agent. He will be an interesting name uh, that people might not really want, but he will um, be a medium, reliable tight end. If he goes somewhere else, I think that I mean, I'm mean, OUT. When did uh, when was the Hopkins injury was against Green Bay, right? I can't, I'll pull up his game log. I was hoping you guys remembered it off the top of your head. Because Ertz had the big game right after the trade. Well, you know, 66 and a touchdown. Hopkins was and gone weeks 9 through 11, and then 15 and after. Yeah, so oh, he, he, he missed... Uh, so exactly when Zach Ertz yeah. was, was having some success. Was I mean, we watched, through 18. we watched a lot of Zach Ertz. He is still physically able to go give you yeah. a decent season of football. But he's not going to produce fantasy numbers for you without massive volume. Was that a fair summation? Yeah. Um. Kyle Pitts come in, came in at number seven, uh, consistency rank of 16. Uh, that was not the name of the game for Kyle Pitts. This 12, poor guy. 12% great games, 18% good, 41%. But he had 110 targets, so he was the third highest targeted tight end. 68 for 1,026. I say that there. There's and one. Yes, the, the touchdowns were an absolute travesty. Uh, but how dare you use a plural word? Yeah. The touchdown. Oh, I, I Yeah. Yes, I that was, was referring to the metric. Yes, no, no. The touchdown the was Pro a big Bowl. He's problem. never heard of a plural metric like but touchdowns. 112 targets turned into 763 yards for Zach Ertz. Yeah. 110 targets turned into over 1,000 receiving yards for Kyle Pitts. He was the best yards per catch of all the tight ends. He was 15 and a half yards per reception. So – Massive volume. This is why you know a lot of optimism, but you you had no touchdowns. You give you give Kyle Pitts three more touchdowns to a awful four total, and it's a different year. But it was difficult. They had nobody else, and uh, Matt Ryan yeah. did not play well. Um, he was better, more consistent against bottom defenses. Makes sense. Tight ends uh, just get so much better. Tight ends yeah. get tight ends grow. Tight ends don't stay what they are their rookie year. There's so much more to learn at the position, and I realize he was almost more of a wide receiver than a tight end. Um, but I mean, I sky is the limit to him. If they can get him a quarterback over the future, and, and next year he's good enough. Um, you know, ne I think next year I'm really curious where Kyle Our, Pitts is drafted. It's going to, to be high. Yeah, it will, and it may not be worth it. We'll see. Uh, since 1990, there have been 18 rookies. So this is spanning wide receivers with a thousand receiving yards. Kyle Pitts is the only one with fewer than six touchdowns. He had so a lot fewer. Every other rookie who's been over a thousand yards had at least six, which mm. is crazy. He'll be a second round draft pick. They, you think he'll jump to the two for sure this year in redraft? Yeah, no chance. Where do you think he's going? Third round. Yeah, it's it's gonna be very high. Yeah, I mean they're going. Here's why. Be, the dynasty excitement, I get it, but. They're going to rebuild the entire wide receiver core. Everybody they have is a free agent. Their entire wide receiver, they'll get, a, they'll get a flashy free agent. They'll get a veteran free agent. They'll get a rookie pick that everybody is in love with. Is there and a then, flashy free agent that they can get? No. Sure. Who? I don't know. Godwin. Chris Godwin if Alan he's Robinson. not franchised. Um, Robinson's flashy? It's flashy enough it's flashy to push it, him to the third <laughs> round, Mike. The money might That's be like flashy. beep. Beep. That's how I mean, Allen Robinson's flashy. Let me let me put it this way. Just go back a season. If Kenny Galladay signed in Atlanta, mm -hmm. Kyle Pitts' excitement would be yeah, muddled. Yeah, but if Kenny, if Kenny Galladay were a free agent this year, it would be more exciting than the free agents were available. I, Assuming I, Adams. Is that how you feel about the, the class? Yeah, well, I, it's headlined by Devontae Adams, but I just I don't see a yeah, world where Yeah, you guys discussed Adams, that too, right? Yeah, I don't, see, I don't see him getting out of Green Bay. 
the, the, the cap situation is tough. Yeah. Yeah. But I, mean, I do you, think he's you, probably you moment, out a way. He's probably moments from a long term deal there. Yeah, I mean, I don't me, think they'll franchise him. I think he, I think he's back with a long-term way, deal. I think Kyle Pitts is the third drafted tight end in redraft next year. I think they'll take him ahead of Kittle. Who's they? The world, the people, oh, the okay. the average so, in the average draft position. Kelsey Andrews and then Pitts. Yeah, okay. Kelsey Andrews. And I think that'll put him in. I just maybe the third. A, yeah, third round. I mean, he reminds me a little bit of uh, kind of where Andrews has gone in recent years. I mean, Waller's still going to be up there. Kittle's still going to be up there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, th those guys will be, I think... Let me ask you right now. Yeah. I mean, we don't know what the landscape was, but are you drafting Kyle Pitts over Kittle and Waller? Yes. Okay. Definitely over Waller, and I really? think uh, ahead of Kittle. What? Man, why you just you love Kyle Waller? Pitts, man. I do love Kyle Pitts. It's so, it's so I ironic. Know. I know. That, I know. You know, I was painted as this Pitts hater. I wasn't. I just didn't... You, were also, you weren't just painted season. as a Pitts hater. You were painted as a Hawkinson lover. Yeah, uh, guilty as charged yeah. as well. Dawson Knox at number eight. I had some debates about uh, Mr. Knox on Twitter, Dynasty Leagues. He you was, love him. I love Dawson Knox. Yeah, I do. I I love, I love the uh, all the power ups he has mm. accumulated around him, which is long term elite quarterback play, yep. trustworthy offense, um, increased target share, like all of the externals to me you know super young i mean i there's a lot i like about it i think that the counter argument is a there's some strong ones against austin knox which would be like i don't know he almost had a tunyon type of season you know nine touchdowns nine's a lot it is could have given a couple to kyle pitts and he would have appreciated it but 49 for 587 that's not that you don't write home about that no so you do have to project a little with dawson knox and you have to you have to make the didn't we do this with Mark Andrews in year two where you have to go, all right, volume will increase, mm -hmm. touchdowns might regress, yep. it should balance out, and you've got yourself a top ten tight end, top five tight end. Yeah, you do. The thing is, where is Dawson Knox going to be drafted? And I think it'll still be – It'll be late. Later. Oh, yeah. Like, he – he could jump into that middle round where it's like the kind of almost that dead zone, deadish zone for uh, tight ends where I prefer not to draft him. So hopefully he doesn't go in there. But if he's a bit later, Dawson Knox is very appealing to me. I, I think behind. Dawson Knox will be Sorry. an eighth rounder in, in redrafts next year somewhere. I think even later maybe. Yeah, uh, if, if he's a double-digit guy, then I, I'll be about him because he can score the touchdowns. Um, but the 49 receptions... I'm not super excited, and unlike Andrews, Andrews was this guy where you saw these flashes. Then the second year, he really took a step up. You know, this was this was Knox's third year after doing very little his first two seasons, um, including you know last year with Josh Allen in a in a great breakout year. So I'm not a hundred. I'm I'm more. You'll take worried. Dallas Goddard over Dawson Knox, right? I would take Dallas Goddard over yeah. Dawson Knox. Yeah, I, I think, think I'll most take, people will. I think I'll take a handful of guys over Dawson Knox. I'm less bullish. Yeah, I mean, that's fair. I, I, I... I'm also a big Gabe Davis fan, so. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Mike, your thoughts on Dawson Knox's season? 27% great games, 40% good, 47% busts. Um, he's one of seven tight ends with nine-plus receiving touchdowns on fewer than 50 receptions, which Hunter Henry did this year, too. Sure, but I'd rather have Josh Allen as my – fantasy reliant quarterback for the tight end i thought it was a, a very solid breakout season for you picked him up off the waiver wire for the most part and yeah he tight ends give you trash games but the fact that he like at least every other game or so he was coming through for your team helping you win a week so i i really like him moving forward hunter henry was number nine 29% good games, 18% great games, 53% busts. <laughs> what was it? Well, it was 50 for 603 and 9. It was nine touchdowns. Is there any of us in this room not willing to dismiss this season? Should we Wait, give yeah, him more just... credit? He was 11th in consistency, just on the outside edge. Everyone expected Johnny Smith to kind of, you know, them to cannibalize each other. No, I'm not. I, I'm not it. <laughs> so you're still you're willing to Wait, dismiss. I am willing to dismiss this year for the most part. I'm not excited. I still think that they need to build up the wide receiver core more. I think they will do that this offseason. I do love Mac Jones's future. 
I'm sure he's going to throw a lot of touchdowns, and Hunter Henry will be a a, a beneficiary. He's if he's if he's you know in those double digit rounds, and all the guys I like are gone, I'd be fine to draft him. But I don't think this is um, that the you know that the touchdowns were indicative of a, a a guaranteed great season next year at all. Uh, Mike, any optimism for the 27 year old Hunter Henry in year two with <sighs> Mac Jones? Uh, pass. See, the, he's my least favorite archetype of tight end, right? Because I don't feel like I can trust playing him ever on any given way. He reminds me of Kyle Rudolph with Minnesota, mm -hmm. where I close my eyes when I put him in the lineup and just hope I get the touchdown. Because if you don't, you don't get like, I don't know, number 15 on the week, you get number 35 on the week or 44 or 67 you get goosed yeah and call me crazy but i prefer for my tight ends to not bust the majority of their games and he busted the majority okay. of his all games. right solid point for me it's more of just the the growth like hunter henry is a very good capable nfl tight end agreed but we're we're five years into the career at this point it just yeah, five the, years and he's peaked like, at number nine. The probability of him taking a, another step for fantasy football purposes is just – it's very low historically. Not not that he can't because he's good, but with the system that I think that they will continue to run with Mac Jones, it's really hard to see a world where Hunter Henry it improves drastically on this. All right, I want to talk about Dallas Goddard, TJ Hawkinson, and Darren Waller to close out our tight end truth segment. Dallas Goddard ended up – 10th with a consistency rank of seven, uh, which was pretty much what he was doing the whole year. 47% good games, 13% great, 40% bust. Uh, really was dominant against bottom 16 defenses, almost 13 points a game. Was really bad against top <laughs> defenses. You know, and, and that kind of makes sense to me that he was bad against top defenses because Jalen Hurts was bad against top defenses. Like there were, he took advantage of matchups that were to his favor and, and to his credit, he, he got it done. But then it seemed like there were games that he got stifled and it seemed like everybody felt it, whether it was Devontae Smith having a bad week, Dallas Goddard. Um, now, Dallas Goddard was number one among tight ends in yards per target and yards per route run. Those are great metrics for presuming future success. Like those things, when, when you're doing those things, uh, usually the, the counting stats will come in later uh, they didn't as much as you wanted this year. I think most people would be disappointed in what Dallas Goddard did, considering that Zach Ertz was gone. Like, I would have been way higher on Dallas Goddard in draft season if I knew Zach Ertz was going to leave. I thought he would dominate given the opportunity by himself. He didn't, but I still do like the talent of him. He, These metrics. And, he did okay. Yeah, no, and he, he wasn't bad. Mid-season contract extension. He probably got another year of... Uh hopefully further developing Jalen Hurts. Yeah, I'll be I'll be pretty in on Dallas Goddard next year ahead of um several several of the people we just talked about. Hawkinson was really a success story. Hawkinson just made me sad but and then, angry. But then he wasn't, but then he kind of was, but then he kind of wasn't. Cuz he tricked us. I mean, his consistency rank was 5. Yeah. He, he had was... 83 targets, 61 for 583 and 4 in 12 games. He only busted 33% of the time which for a tight end is actually a really solid number. Now, uh, so, so to answer the question, 50% good, yeah, 33% bust. So, like, was he... I think he was good. But was he... Uh, I mean, he... He didn't break out. Were you happy out. if you drafted him? I think that's the hardest question no, I've asked. No, you're de definitely not. I can say no. Fifth round, with all of those wide receivers that went in the fifth round, like that 5-6 area this year, Okay, you are not happy with what Hawkins did yeah I I would I would say that that's true I mean it's a sliding scale it's all relative to who, el who else you would have drafted would you, were you happier with Hawkinson than Waller you, yes um obviously he didn't help you in the playoffs as he got injured and was shut down but he did show enough flashes to where I you know look going forward it's going to be another debate right Hawkinson did he or Goddard I'll go Hawkinson even even with the profile picture on his face. <laughs> oh, time to dig in. Let's find oh, out. What are we doing? Uh, oh, yeah. How, where are we that. getting these pictures, man? Well, that one was from the Dwarven Mines. Oh, my um, gosh. Also, get a bigger <laughs> helmet, brother. I know. the. Wait, I'm, okay. I'm, now I'm on Mike, my way. Mike, yeah, you got to get in on this, man. Yeah. Well, this is something special. Oh, yeah. 
He. He's in the Dwarven Mines with an he, extra small helmet on. Also, currently mid dump taking. <laughs> oh, God. You got to check these pictures out. Wow. But we only he's show. also working a forge at the exact same do time. We, do we oh, get yeah. discounts on the pr- picture pack if they're all taking a dump in the middle of it? We just, we like the constipation pack. Impromptu, you know, off the cuff photos. Yeah. Oh, man. He's die cut in this pose. I mean, if I'm putting this picture together i'm looking for another one all right so hawkinson he just he he's this was an homage to his former coach i think hawkinson proved something to me this year which is that he can have what i love at the tight end position which is weak winning weeks right he can yeah. go out and dominate a week finish number three for the first two weeks of the year finish number one overall in week eight uh number four in week 13 so do you want to see more consistency of course stay healthy <clears throat> Get some consistency on the offensive line. Put the offense in a position to have success. I mean, they ended the year fairly strong. The future seems pretty bright for TJ Hawkinson. Has the draft capital. He's 24 years old. He won't cost you a fifth round. Are you a Dawson Knox or Hawkinson, Mike? Oh, man. Uh, if ADP is not factoring in at all, I think I'll go Knox. Really? Yeah. Wow, that is such an easy Hawkinson for me. I think I would even have to say Hawkinson on that one. Uh, Darren Waller finished at number nine in consistency, 18 overall. Hurt over the last part of the year. You know, was this a case of starting too good to be true with the target totals at 18 targets in week one? Look, he was 55. 55! First six, 65, and two. Okay. I mean, this was... This was a bummer because you had yes, to invest third round, high third round draft capital on a player that, look, you draft a tight end that high, they have to win you weeks for the weeks that are there, and he didn't do it very often. Mm-mm. And and I'm not entirely sure why uh, he, he still had enough targets coming his way, not 18 like in week one. And we, we talk about how that was a, such a letdown, but – it wasn't how like does that happen? how does that even happen uh, in a game? I, I know how it ha- <laughs> I, I want to bring this up and and to your question, Jason, do you worry about the lo- the lack of John Gruden? Because Gruden was famous for these quotes after he's the best player. I'm just gonna find a way to get him the ball, the targets. Like did the team get better and push towards the playoffs because they had to go well other other places in the offense? Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I mean, the the reality is, Gruden was there for the, in, you know, the first half of the season when after week one, he the targets were pretty much the same from after week one. The rest of the season, he was on a great target count. You you look at weeks two through twelve, the the rest of his games outside of the week one, he was on pace for a hundred and twenty two targets. Yeah. That, I mean, we just talked about that's the number Zach Ertz was the number two targeted tight end in yeah, the league. Yeah, that would have put, put him at number two. Yeah, and I mean, that's great. That's what you hope for. And yet he was disappointing through the majority of those games. Um, they weren't all bad. This is going to be a real weird pick next year. Yeah, I so wonder real. if he, he's losing a step at all because he's such an athletic uh, mo- you know he is he has just been a dominator out there yes he has. um that was that was how he was kind of found that diamond in the rough because his athletic profile was awesome he's gonna be 30 th- this coming season and while that's not a death knell for tight ends tight ends can dominate at 30 it is you know if if you're if you're relying on athleticism and you're losing speed then all of a sudden you know it, in the nfl if you lose a step mm-hmm. it feels like 12 I don't, I don't know if i'd go that far yet with him yeah, I, from what I but I mean, he caught twenty nine percent of his passes over the last two weeks. That's not good. Oh man, that's not 20, supposed to happen. Nine. Yeah, he, he caught two of nine targets in the final week of the year, and two of five in the week before that, or the last time he played before that. So, you know, I I think this is just going to be a really like difficult player. He was number three, number two at the position. The injury's gonna the injury's gonna ward people off. The twenty nine years old, whatever, gonna be thirty, and then Derek Carr, and the change of hey, they got a new head coach too, mm-hmm. which is uh, McDaniel's. Did mm-hmm. we talk about him on the show? Did that get uh, announced? Who knows? We've announced it, but I don't think we've. I mean, we're we're waiting for our coaching changes episode in but, early I mean, he's, March. He's known as an offensive mind, which is something that you know you probably would feel more confident having his mind come in there and run the offense than, than yep. Basaccia staying there. At this point, for redraft, I'm willing to forgive 
this season. I think I am too. But where does that mean? Does that mean you're taking him over? Would you take him over Pitts? Oh, man. No, like, this is an ADP question. Uh, like, ADP out the window. You just, who, who, you know, they, they're the last two guys on the board. Who would you rather have next year? Uh, I'm going to go Pitts. I would go Pitts there, yeah. yeah. For the hope. Likewise. What, what about Kittle? I would go Kittle. I'd take Kittle. Okay. For all those 90 yard bombs that Trey Lance is about and to what throw. About, what about Gronk? Oh! With Kyle Trask, Jason's Gronk, favorite player. Gronk. Gronk. Um, Gronk. Are we going to talk about uh, Tyler Conklin? Is that who we. What? I just want to say Conk. Conklin. Oh, okay. We're not. Okay. Conk, we're Conk. not. We're going to stop talking then completely right oh, now. Thank you. Oh, gosh. Thank I'm, you. I, that had to have been Al. It was. Yeah, I fired you like seven, eight times today. You did. That's I know. a true story. At least any five of, those, of them totally deserved to. Yeah. Any, we got any of those cookies? Somebody sent us cookies. Do we got any of them left? We do. All right. Well, that, We no, should wrap this up. I think we're going to close things down. All right. That is it for The Truth. We'll be back with another episode this week. Th this week's. Thanks for tuning in. <laughs> oh, man. Really sticking the landing. Yeah. <laughs> close it strong. Thank you for listening, everybody. We'll see you in a couple days. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.